are on our way. All right. So, yeah. welcome to, um, hey, Michelle, I'm going to go ahead and mute you. Thank you. Welcome to the uh, Blick virtual session number six. Uh, we've got Sue, Steve, and Michelle here tonight with us. That's awesome. I think this is actually the, one of the largest um, groups we've ever had for this course, this part of the course. Uh, three people is amazing. So uh, I'm excited, actually. So it's nice to have you with us tonight. Um, if you're like me and you're a big hockey uh, buff, which I'm not a super hockey buff, but the Red Wings are in the background. So if you see me jump up or something, maybe because I scored, because they're losing right now. So anyways, um, I'll try to keep my, my focus on the course tonight. So I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, unmute you. And um, one, I want you to tell us maybe one of the successes that you've had recently. Share with that. And then um, also if you have any burning questions that need answered. So we're going to start at the top of the screen with Sue. Any Anything that you'd like to share with us, Sue, that is a success? Well, um, I just got a projector in my room. Nice. Can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you. Yep, I'm, I'm using it for my brother-in-law. So we've been doing ADD math. And then I do it on the whiteboard with the computer and everything, and the kids follow along on their sheet. Much easier to see it one whole thing um, as everybody's going along with you. Right. And also, too, they um, as soon as the projector comes out, they're as quiet as can be. Cool. They love it. They crave it. Great. Steve, how about you? Success stories? Um, I would say uh, success-wise, actually, this Wednesday morning, I'm meeting with our principal and our actually uh, online learning director, and we're talking about the future of virtual learning and online learning and blended learning in our district. Um, and so... I get to be part of that kind of conversation. So I'm excited. That's kind of a success for me. So nice. Congratulations. That's a cool, that's a cool thing to, as a teacher to be pulled into, um, and then having, you know, them value your uh, opinion. So that's, that's awesome. Yeah. Very cool. We lost Michelle somehow. Um, so we'll just go back up. To the top. Michelle's back. There we go. Look at that. Thank you. Michelle, you're back. Any success stories, Michelle? I'm going to go ahead and unmute her. Hello. Hey, Michelle. Any, huh? Any success stories, Michelle? Um, Any success stories, Michelle? No. Okay. Well, I'm, getting, I'm getting more um, of the activities done. For the course, awesome. That's great. That's awesome. Very, very uh, excited about that. How about uh, any questions from anyone? Sue? No questions. Okay, Steve? Um, one question that I have just to pose, is I'm actually due for my certificate renewal this year, and so... Oh, me too. My sketchies in that, um, I know for timeline getting turned around by, you know, end of June is one of my, you know, I think I'm pretty well covered with most of my stuff, but I, one of the reasons I took the course was to definitely make sure I was over my requirements. So right. hopefully, you know, that timeline, everything is just. Yeah. Um, I just realized I was rocking in a rocking chair, so I apologize. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's not, um, you know, it's not super fast. I would say the turnaround, but since we finished in the, in the middle of May, it may take a month or so. So you should have you should see those evaluations pop up in the middle of June, okay. um, sometime, and just so keep on checking your email. I will reach out. I'm going to go ahead and send um, um, everything that that I haven't sent in so far. That in, in terms of um, sign-in sheets um, and checks are actually going to go in this week. I've had them this long, um, so. I will go ahead and reach out and see what the turnaround rate and okay. time is, and, and I'll post that for everybody. Awesome. I need it too. Okay, okay. And Michelle, you'll, you'll get this. In. I'll just post it in the uh, the latest news area. Okay. Okay. 
Mm-hmm. All right. I see that uh, we've got another phone call come person come in, which is great. Um, I'm not sure who it is, so feel free to speak up. Well, hello. Hello. This is Jeanette Jackson. Hey, Jeanette. Thanks for joining us. Hi. Thanks. I'm so happy I was able to get through. <laughs> yeah, it's very this cool. is exciting. Yeah, cool. Okay, so you guys talked about evaluations, and those uh, will be uh, coming up mid-June. Was there anything before that that I missed? Uh, I don't think so. We were just sharing any celebrations. Anything you'd like to share with us? Uh, uh, enough coming to my mind right away, so uh, okay. <laughs> I guess I don't have anything. Okay, okay. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and and, um, and mute everybody right now, and then I'm going to go ahead. You should be seeing um, Michelle uh, over Jeanette. You obviously can't see it because you're on a phone, but um, right. I'm going to go ahead and mute everybody here, and we're going to take a look at the blended learning um, courses and the modules right now. All right. Okay. All right. So I'm going to mute you right now. So where we are right now in the course, um, and I'm just going to kind of. Monitor on down here and just kind of scroll down. Um, I know a lot of you have just started to kind of get into like module five and module six a little bit. Module seven is open on assessment. I know a couple of you have started that. I know I think Steve has started that and maybe Jeanette. Um, so we'll take a look at module seven a little bit more in depth tonight. Um, sorry, I just feel like I was rocking again and. Um, We'll take a sneak peek at module eight, policies and course summation, and you can see that course, the course, course summary and closure is not too far behind. Um, you won't have topic 11 and 12 in your course, I don't believe. And if you do, it doesn't mean anything because we're not going there. So I also wanted to point out where we are in the calendar. So hopefully you can see my calendar here, and this is the Blick calendar. Um, here's today, here's our Blick virtual session number six. Um, module eight actually opens this Thursday. And then, you know, if I take a look at next month, we're not that far off until being done. Um, so here's today, and then all the coursework is due. So that module eight and that closure almost has to be tied together. That closure is not very long. It won't take you very long to do, um, but it is one little tiny little piece of a module. Um, it's not a full blown module at all. Um, but it does have to be done before um, the 15th and all coursework is due on the 15th. That means you need to be finished with everything. Um, I'll go through a little bit tonight about to how to go back and check things to make sure everything is right. Um, if it says you needed to do um, three responses to other people's posts, you had to do three responses where it probably it won't, it won't be marked complete. So you, you need to make sure you go back and check all your modules and your course completion or those modules to make sure that you actually have everything complete. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and unmute again, just in case you have questions about that. All right. Anybody have a question about that? Uh, Jerry, just in response to the, uh, the previous virtual sessions, um, I kind of was remiss on my checking my emails and looking at the quizzes and those sorts of things there because I didn't see a way to get that those were checked as complete. Um, in the, yeah, there's uh, not. What um, so right I'll do is I'll, I'll go back in to the Google Docs because um, those are all Google Forms and then it creates a spreadsheet. I think there was one that I forgot to put your name, a place to put your name on it. Okay. So I just... You know, I'm just going to go ahead and just keep it like it is, and okay. I'll just trust that everybody else is going to be professional and just watch it. Okay. So if you haven't watched that yet, um, or if you haven't watched the previous versions, go ahead and watch those the best you can. Go through, answer the questions the best you can, and then you'll get credit for that. All right. So it shouldn't be that, that big a deal. I, I it won't it won't um it shouldn't come back to haunt you in terms of like not getting the course done. So oh. anything else? Good question. Okay. 
I'm going to put you on mute again real quick. All right. And everybody's muted. <clears throat> so let's take a look at um, module, assess, module 7 assessment. So in module, assess, uh, excuse me, module 7 assessment, um, it goes through the different types of assessment. Um, I do like this one called online strengths and in-person assessment strengths. So basically what it's just asking you is it's one of those um, glossary items in, in, in Moodle. And go back and review the standards in sections G, H, and I. And just kind of go through those things um, in terms of the standards. And then you need two separate entries in order to share two uh, assessment standards you would feel that are an online strength. So identify the, the standard and then why you think that standard would be a strength in the online environment for you. Um, so don't put two of your, of the, of the uh, entries into one because I'm gonna have to have you go back and redo that. I know somebody did that and I, I made a comment. I can't remember who it was. I'm not gonna point it out right now, but um, just make sure you go through that and just follow the directions. It has to be done the way it's done for it to get marked complete. Then the same thing would go for the in-person assessment strengths. Let that come up here. And again, GH and I, uh, review those standards and then go through two separate entries in order to share two assessment standards you would feel that would be a strength in your face-to-face. -face. So make sure you include the letter. So like standard H, I feel strongly that this would be a good one in person. Um, if you've already done this and you didn't include the letter, just go back and make a comment in your own post um, and just add that to it. It's not that big a deal, but I want to make sure you've, you're following what it's asking you to follow. And I think that's the biggest thing. Is if it says that you know you need to create two separate entries, then you have to create two, two separate entries. I didn't create the course, but um, I have to follow the guidelines. So it is what it is. Um, there's a whole issue or a whole, uh, not issue, but a whole section on uh, formative assessment. And then it has a, a discussion board here in module seven about formative assessment and web 2.0. This one's a little, it could be a little lengthy. So, um, what you basically have to do is think about por what formative assessment means, um, as you plan and then what strategies. Uh, will you implement to gain um, student evidence and that learning targets have been reached and then you're going to do analyzing and then give feedback to the students. So you have to go through this whole step by step by step and then um, look through some of those formative assessment strategies and either some either with tech and non-tech examples and then identify at least web uh, one web 2.0 tool that you would use. So. I'm not sure anybody has started this one yet, and they haven't. Uh, I'm wondering if I'm going to have to redo this, it looks like to me, because it's not. Uh, you can reply right here. Yeah, yours should be fine. The more I look at it, yeah, it's, it's fine. Um, so it could be you know, any number of Web 2.0 tools that you're already using, possibly, for formative assessment. Um, I don't know if you're in an MLS. There's probably something that's already built into your LMS that you can, might use for formative assessment. That's fine. I'm fine with that. I don't think it has to be something that you've never used before. Um, but at the same time, if it's something that um, you'd like to use and to try out with students, that would be a great uh, idea to do that. I'm going to come down to the next one. The next one talks about giving feedback, and there's a whole section to read through there. And then feedback points to ponder. This is a hand in assignment. So things to think about as you're giving feedback, your online voice, the timeliness of your feedback, which I know that um, I'm not perfect at at all, um, but time management, um, student perceptions, the consistency of messages, which I think is very important. If you say one thing to one person, you need to say it to all people. And I think in an online environment, it's easy to get off track a little bit with that. I've, I've felt um, as an instructor, so um, of adults, um, so that would be a little bit different, something to think about. Um, and then the purpose, why are you giving the feedback? 
You know, sometimes feedback is good for all of us, I think, in terms of as being a student and being a participant in the course. But there's sometimes where I'm, I think that part or feedback can be overkill and you're just giving feedback just to get feedback. So think about that as you, as you answer that question. And then it's also talking about the impact of feedback versus online versus face to face. And obviously that's going to be a little different in terms of um, possibly timeliness and um, communication process and things like that. All right. Let's go down feedback in the blended environment. Like I said, this, this module is a little bit long. And in this one, um, basically for this activity, submit an assessment activity that the students will be participating either online or in the classroom followed by several varying strategies for providing feedback. Make sure you include at least two in-person strategies and two online strategies. So again, an assessment activity, uh, multiple strategies, at least two in-person strategies, and two online strategies. Whether you don't, you, you've um, gone through that or not, um, you need to make sure that you include those. Um, so it could be something that you're, you're going to only do online, but make sure you also include two in-person strategies. So they even give you some examples. So create a word cloud to summarize all the, con the contributed thoughts online or in class. So you do a Wordle or a Tagazito. Um, so there's your online, that, that would be an online piece. Um, have a student provide a summary of the conversation either online or class. So the student would go back and actually summarize what was talked about in class. So that's a real quick formative assessment tool. Like an exit ticket would be a formative assessment tool. You could do an exit ticket, um, you know, online, really you could, or you could do that um, in person. I mean, if you think about it, our virtual sessions that are that are recorded, and I give you that little tiny, you know, quiz, a little formative assessment tool, that's basically what I'm using. It's a Google Form as a formative assessment tool. So there's another one for you. So there's a number of different ways you can do that. Um, and an exit ticket out the door is that they have to, you know, give you one of the strategies that was worked on today and how they're going to use that in their, in their learning as they walk out the door. So there's a, there's a in-person, a face-to-face. -face. So I think this is the, the biggest thing about this one is to make sure that you do two in-person strategies and two online strategies. I think that's where pe most people get um, caught up on that one because they forget that I need two of each. They just think I can just do two of one kind of the other. So there's no or there, there's an and. So that is feedback in the blended environment. And that's a glossary item. Uh, let me go back real quick just to remind myself. Um, and that's not, you don't have to respond to anybody. It's a fairly long one, so that's kind of nice. Once you get your entry done, you are done with that piece. And there's a whole piece on summative assessments. And there's this great discussion on the SBAC <laughs> practice and training test. So, <clears throat> seeing that, um, I mean, I'm guessing most of you are, are in M-STEP land, or at least close to it, or have knowledge of that. Um, I'm actually pretty okay if we change this up a little bit. So where you ever see the word SBAC, you can insert for yourself M-STEP. That's fine with me. I'm not gonna change it on the screen for you, but I'm fine with that. Um, and I think if if you go to the practice test, and I'll post those in, in here, that the M-STEP practice test, just in case that you aren't giving the M-STEP yourself, just so that you can go through those if you haven't gone through those as a staff a member at your school. But think of all these things that, that come up in the, uh, the M-STEP, or if you wanna go through the SBAC, that's fine. And so to be complete with this, you need to post at least one idea and reply to at least two ideas presented in our class. So. Um, consider your experience. Put in the context of your students taking the test. How can we ensure that their test taking experience is assessing their content knowledge? <laughs> well, that should be an interesting discussion. Um, I would think that's going to be a great discussion, especially if we, um, every, wherever we see SBAC, we actually put the word MSTEP in. That should be 
the easiest discussion probably that we've had so far in this course. Um, I'm not sure how you're feeling about it, but I know that uh, some of our teachers are freaking out a little bit. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to unmute you all up to this point. Any questions with this one? Since we changed it a little bit, do you feel like the, do you feel like it's a fair thing to do to change it to M step just so that I mean you're experiencing something as we go through it? I don't know much about M step, so did you say you were going to put some examples in? Yeah, I'll take a link um, for you for a practice test um, to go through that. Okay. Yep. Anybody else have a question? Just a quick question, Jerry, about replying to other people's posts. Yep. Like, I know we're getting down to the end and people are behind and I'm kind of like right where I need to be. Yeah. So I know I'm going to have to go back and double check to make sure that I've replied to people. Okay. Because sometimes I forget. If I'm ahead of the curve, I forget to go back. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So is, can you, I actually respond to myself if, if necessary? And I mean, um, would that count or no? And in the system. If, I've never tried it. Yeah, <laughs> probably not. Um, what I'll probably do is... Like if for some reason you're the only person there at the end um, on the last couple of modules or something, I, I think Sue and Michelle are probably like, no, I'm going to be there. I'm going to be right there at the end. But, I'm going to get it. Yeah, but just in case you are the only person at the end. Um, hey, Sue, I'm going to mute you real quick. Um, I will go ahead and post something so that you can post back to me or reply back to me. Okay. And then that will take care of that. Great, thanks. Jeanette, did you hear anything? Uh, no, I'm taking notes and listening, and, and I think I'm getting it all down. <laughs> good. Yeah, that's good to hear. Good to hear. Any other questions? Okay. Sue, I do have you muted right now, just because there's some background noise. All game on. <laughs> all game on, yeah. What's the score? Yeah, what's the score? 4 0, top of the first. Wow. Tigers? Wow. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I'm, all, I'm multitasking right now. You can keep me muted. <laughs> all right. You're on mute. <laughs> I, I do have a question. Yeah, go ahead. If, Hi, can, Jerry. Is, Hi. is our, our uh, sketches, if, if, I don't know how to say this, is it all or nothing kind of thing? It is. Okay. It is, unfortunately, yeah. I had somebody uh, from our high school actually go through it in the fall with me. And she's like, you know, I did so much work. You know, I, I finished through module five. Do I get any sketches for that? And I'm sorry, I don't, I don't control that. But I mean, I wish I could say, yeah, sure, you get sketches. But unfortunately, it's all or nothing. Okay. Okay. So keep plugging away. Keep plugging away. We don't really have that much longer. So it's important to keep plugging away. Okay. Okay. Jory, you just joined us. Any questions off the top of your head? No, nope, none that I can think of. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and, and mute you all again, and we're gonna continue on. I'll be coming back. All right, so again, the SBAC practice and training test just for Jory, if you missed that piece. Wherever you see SBAC, you can input the word uh, M-step, and then try to answer it from an M-step perspective. Okay, this course was actually, um, this piece of the course was actually designed before NSTEC actually was even a thought, I think. So, all right, the next piece uh, to look at is an activity, designing a comprehensive assessment plan. All right, there are three parts to this activity. One, provide a detailed overview of the unit that you're gonna do. Again, this is a longer activity, so don't, don't take a long time doing that. Um, don't put this one to the end, because this is gonna take some time. Um, we suggest you typing it up in a Google Doc or word processing document, like Word or something like that, uh, and submit it by using the URL or uploading the document. <clears throat> That's a good uh, hint there. Um, so you need a comprehensive assessment plan uh, for a relative unit in your blended learning environment. Um, using at least one of the Web 2.0 tools that you learned about uh, recently. So it could be something you learned about in this core, in this module, 
Um, but it does have to tie in with obviously assessment and comprehensive assessment plan. So you need to talk about the objectives of that, that unit, the standards you're going to cover, um, and any activities, the activities or you, what kind of activities you're going to do in that unit. And then you need to identify at least three form of assessments. So some of those could be face-to-face, -face, some could be online, um, since it's a blended learning uh, environment. And then I'm not going to go through each of these with you. Um, I mean, I'm not going to take the time to go through every single one of them. But I think it's really important to you know consider the tools you've learned about and what's the tools you're already familiar about. If you already have familiar about some of the tools, then I would use those tools. Um, and select the tools that you complete the assessment or the, ass the assessments. Yep. And then the last thing is design a summative assessment rubric. So again, the rubric must have three levels and must meet three or more criteria to evaluate. So they give it a nice uh, sample assessment plan here. So we're gonna take a look at this Google Doc right here, the sample. So you notice that you've got, you know, just a breakdown. You could actually go through this, come over to file, make a copy of it for yourself in Google Docs, if you have a Google account. And then I would um, just obviously change all the content, but you could leave it the same plan. So just, you know, unit, you have unit lesson plan objectives, and then you would change the objectives. You leave standards and then change, obviously it's New York State standards, so you want to change to Michigan State, um, and then some activities. And then here's where they talk about the, the formative assessment. So they're talking about using a Vokey for uh, a formative assessment, which is a nice little tool. I, I enjoy Vokey a lot. And then you notice that they've created a, a rubric down here and it continues on. So you've got three different criteria and you've got three different uh, areas in terms of your rubric. So obviously there's gonna be some thought gonna go into this. I would not make it just to make it. I would actually do it that's going to, you can use this later on. Um, I think it's just a waste of time to go through this and just build it just to get the coursework done. I would do it so with something that you're actually going to put into action um, either this school year, I know we're coming to a close here pretty soon, but or maybe next fall, um, something that you can get started with in your blended learning course. So that is a longer assignment. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and take you off mute real quick, just to make sure if there's anybody that needs to ask any questions. Anybody need to ask any questions? No. Nope. All right. Oh, there's one one thing. Uh, as I'm writing my notes and I'm not in front of my screen, but you said um, as we we can change, you know, to the use of Michigan uh, State standards, blah, blah blah. And then you said you can use a, and I didn't get the word you said. Was something like Voki or something like Vokey, that? Yeah, Voki. V O K I. You'll see that in the um, the sample activity, and Voki is a nice okay. little tool where you can record your voice or your kids' voices with like an avatar. Okay. That's okay. pretty cool too. All right. All right. About 10 minutes left uh, of the of the actual um, online course because of the fact that we got started a little late. So we only have about 10 minutes left, so I wanna go through and um, give you a sneak peek of the next module, okay? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm gonna mute everybody here real quick. We're gonna come back here. The next couple things you'll do in module seven is you've done this before, uh, do your tracking form, add your pieces to module seven, and then go through the assessment reflection piece for module seven. In module eight, policies and course um, summation. In this one, um, you've got um, in an introduction, You've got talking about using a syllabus or a learning plan in your course. Uh, many of you may already have something like that, especially if you're a secondary teacher. Um, there's a discussion board of what a blended learning syllabus might look like. Uh, there's an introduction to the standard K for standards. You can take a look at that one real quick in terms of a, a discussion board. So this is all about um, the standards for quality online teaching standard K and talking about standards K is different from the other standards. 
and it's about how you use and manage media and content. So basically instructional design skills. Um, and then you go through the whole, you'll have to read through the standard K and then answer the questions, you know, which ability did you choose? What are some time saving strategies to accomplish these types of tasks, et cetera? And what is a resource or a specific website you would recommend for someone struggling with that ability? So that's a new standard you haven't seen yet. Um, in the last piece here, and then you go ahead and reply to that. And then there's a standards reflection piece. So the whole, this whole piece is about all the standards for the quality online teaching. And it talks about um, writing a personalized narrative that focuses on the areas of strength relative to at least two of the NICOL, I -NIC, NACOL sorry, uh, standards for quality online teaching that you feel is most confident in, and then two that you feel least confident in. Um, and then support your reflection with specific examples that are related to the standards. So that's not a, it has an activity resources, all the standards are right here for you. So if you forgot about, you know, going back to the original standards uh, location, you can just go right here and find your activity resources. Then you've got um, adjusting your syllabus. There's a hand in there. I'm going to skip down to, um, there's your tracking form update, but I'm going to skip down to Blick Portfolio. So for the final project for the course, you're to create a multimedia presentation in the manner of your choice. So you can do a Prezi, a video, a YouTube video, a digital story. I've seen people do um, like a Google slide presentation. Um, and you need to include these things. Several screenshots or pictures demonstrating your use of blended learning in your environment. Um, most important tips for a blended learning instructor. That's an important one, it has to be there. Most important tips for your new blended learner. So tips for learners and students. What, what kind of tips would you give for your students? Um, a very thorough description, doesn't have to be super long, um, of your blended learning environment. Feedback from those involved, maybe from students, hopefully, parents, any other teachers around you that have given you some feedback like, oh, I wanna try that, things like that. And then ways blending learning has changed your teaching. Um, and then some new ideas that, you're, that you've implemented this year uh, as the result of the blended course. So um, you should make sure that you use, use a Creative Commons license that you learned about earlier in the modules. And you need to cite, make sure you cite your images. So that's how we started the course in module one with the animal um, activity that we did. We had to cite our resource or cite our images you be doing the same thing with this one. If you take pictures of your own, um, of your students working in like on RAS Kids or in the LMS, that's fine. Um, and you put those in your presentation, just make sure that, you know, photos um, taken by, you know, Jerry Johnson or, or, or whoever took the pictures. But you can totally have as much fun with this as you want to. It is some work, so don't delay. Um, if you can start doing something like this now before the course even this module even opens, which is I think we're going to open it on Thursday, um, get started now. If you think start thinking about an idea now, because um, this one does take a little time, um, it's not a huge amount of time, um, but it does take a little time. There's some previous samples down here, some examples by grade level, so I want to make sure that um, you can you have those too. And if you click on that, it's another Google Doc, and it takes you to different uh, blended learning examples. I will also um, post in this module um, my, blend, my, my example of mine. All I did was, I think I created either a PowerPoint or a Google Slideshow, and then I, um, I uploaded the, that to YouTube, and so it actually had a little digital uh, storytelling feature to it. So it wasn't a wasn't a huge, um, you know, huge project, um, but at the same time, it did take some time. So you need to create one entry for your project for that. All right. We only have a few seconds left to actually record this. So what I'm probably gonna do at this point is 
I'm going to stop recording.